just a heads up, this is a little bit of a, a rant and I don't usually um, publicly rant, <clears throat> but in this last month there's been uh, several uh, videos posted by professional reviewers and and we're talking about million dollar systems who have made changes regarding room acoustics and I'm not seeing any information regarding the science behind it. There's um, a lot of science that should be applied to uh, room acoustics. You can't just guess. You need to know what the conditions are that um, you're dealing with and then what uh, the target is to, uh, to reach. And then the tools and how to uh, approach them um, to, to get there. Um, so what are we talking about controlling? Primarily, there's four areas that we are talking about. The first being noise control, because you've got to address that before you can get to sound quality. And noise control is a, is a big issue, and we'll make several videos regarding that. But in, in general, we're talking about um, noise is a two-way street, so we're talking about noise that might be coming, infiltrating the space from outside, or maybe our space bothering people out um, of our space, those who are trying to study or, or sleep. Um, so we might be talking about road noise or, or air traffic, or, or it could be internal, it could be equipment noise, it could be um, the HVAC, it could be plumbing, etc. And so that's a, a big topic that uh, we'll make some videos about. Um, so what are we trying to control and then uh, how do we control them? Well, in order to control them, we've got to uh, measure them. There's a couple of ways that that can be done. It can be done um, actually um, on sites best, but now there's some means where I can have an individual make an uh, impulse recording for me and send it send that file to me and that along with photographs and and uh, some other information i can do a pretty good job probably 75 80 percent of, of the the job yes if i go there on site i can do a better job um, and then i can also make recommendations uh, on the spot uh, and also subjectively evaluate uh, but so first testing of the existing conditions and then um, second would be modeling of um, well first of all knowing what our target is uh, what we're trying to achieve and then um, applying recommendations acoustic treatments on on how to get there so um, noise control I mentioned um, room modes so we're looking at um, Controlling factors from room modes would be uh, the dimensions of the room, the construction materials and, and methods, um, the listening positions and the, um, the source, the speaker, the subwoofers, the, the main uh, speaker location inside that room. Um, uh, then we are talking about first order reflections and, and treating them either with absorption or, or diffusion. And then we're talking about the remaining reverberation times and how the room, you know, we, we want to have a, a linear uh, reverberation time across the audible bandwidth uh, for the most part. Um, so then how do we control those? Well, um, like I say, we measure, then we computer model, and then we apply um, uh, that, that model to uh, different materials. And so we, we need to know what is it we're trying to address with what. It's always a matter of, of what type of material and then how much of that material, you know, the quantity, and then the location. Different acoustic treatments are for different applications, right? Like you might be addressing um, some room modes you might be addressing first order reflections, you might be addressing reverberation times, and depending on those reverberation times, you might address those, reverber those first order reflections with diffusion or maybe absorption. Um, and then uh, looking at reverberation times, uh, we need to know what the, what the target is. So we need to know the, the right type of treatment in the right locations and the right quantities. So there's, there's different acoustic panels, for example, for different applications. Um, there's um, different locations depending on what we're trying to address. Is it room modes or first order reflections or reverberation times? Um, uh, are we uh, 
there, there's there's different sizes too. Um, so if we're trying to deal with uh, room modes, we're talking about a deep uh, um, uh, panel. If we're talking about diffusion, we're also probably talking about a, a deep panel. Um, if we're and then different quantities for different conditions. Uh, essentially, with the you know with the surface area, the inter internal surface area of a room, we've got three tools. We've got reflection, absorption, and diffusion, and uh, um, we want to be able to control them. For example, um, uh, reverberation times. We want to have a, a linear reverberation time. Everyone's room's different. It's as unique as uh, as a thumbprint. Um, and we want to have control over that. So we want to have linear reverberation times from, for example, 125 hertz on up. We want to have those fall within 0.25 and 0.4 seconds. And at 125 and down, we want to maybe have a little longer decay rate as it uh, is um, so it'll ascend as it is going lower in frequency response. And that's just a, a psychoacoustic reason. If it was, were too sharp, um, it's uncomfortable. Um, and uh, so it, it needs to have a little bit of, of uh, liveliness in the low frequencies so that what our eyes see and ears hear doesn't confuse the brain and, and be uncomfortable. Um, Back to the reviewers, I, I think, you know, it's so nice when they, they list their equipment. That gives you a lot of information as far as um, uh, their, their listening experience and their opinion and, and what they're reviewing about. In fact, I'd, I'd love it if they went into that too. What, what attributes are they, do they really pay, um, like to uh, pay attention to, like depth of field or, or dynamics or microdynamics or uh, harmonics, things like that. What, what is it that they are really keen to? It's nice to know. It'd be nice to know their, their room layout. And then it'd be um, really helpful to know what their reverberation curve is and what their noise floor is. Because uh, those are big influencers. In reverberation times, if they're uh, screwy, and unless they're under control properly, they're screwy, then they're very tonal. And um, that has a huge impact on what they're hearing. Un understand that in a room that is um, not under control, that is uh, not acoustically treated, and you're not sitting in the near field, most of the sound energy that you're hearing is coming from the room, not directly from the speaker. Hope this was informative and uh, that you <laughs> uh, forgive my, my rant.